Check, check. Oh, yes, we are rolling. We're ready to roll. We're doing this. How excited am I right now about, about the fact that we're doing this? Do you even know how excited I am? Okay, so check it out. This is what I'm working on right now. We're gonna work on some other stuff this stream, but this is what first thing is. So there's um this little thing where it pops. when you Whenever you pick up a bit of uh, anything like uh, your, your mana or gold or light, it pops a number up above your head with an icon next to it that's supposed to represent that that the currency that you're picking up and as you can see in this little image right here we've got two of them on top of each other there we go that's right there in this frame we have both of these icons on top of each other and the problem is that I started this uh, I started some code to can stack these numbers on top of each other but since one of them was visible it's it did the um, it did the mana uh, up a little bit high and then when it got to this point where it needed to do the gold one There was also already one there because of the mana was already there So there's a bug in the fact that it needs to drop down um, the existing one um, to the bottom position when a Whenever it can so that a new one can appear at the second level or the third level So we can stack them up nicely and they'll never be on top of each other So that's the first goal and I've already got the code mostly working here. Let's see how this rolls We're gonna run this and if this works, we'll see when we have two of them stacking up on each other We'll have one of them drop back down after it's done and really we should be we should be debugging this to see how, if, if all my code worked correctly like if it sorted the nodes correctly and all that so I, I'd probably need to debug this but if it just works on the first try then hooray okay so cross your fingers if you wanted to work on the first try <laughs> here we are and um, nice okay oh Oh, okay, that did slide it back down after a while, but I think that actually worked. Oh, we need to use the get rid of our mana. There we go. Dang, it's not quite working fast enough. Which means a couple things. We need definitely need to debug it to see if we got the right durations and they're in the right order. And then secondly, we need to kind of like multiply by maybe half right here. Maybe this is, needs to be like 0 0.75. Alrighty, all right. Uh, let's see what, serious? Oh, boop. Yeah. Dang. Huh. Okay, I think quicksort does less. Okay, so that means that it, the shortest ones are going to be the beginning. Let's just ignore this. And we need to figure out why it's not dropping down fast enough. Let's try half the duration. So if we have a remaining duration of us to we need to make this even shorter if possible to a new total duration of delay plus duration oh we also hmm hey that worked sweet using 0 0.5 works there all right i think we're gonna call this a good sweet i love it it's good enough okay let's check this in i love how it slides back down after it's done and this is gonna be just fine i suppose if we found a key we could get a key pick up some gold and get some mana back and that would be three of them might help to see that oh sh there we go okay we're gonna pick up gold key and get some mana sweet oh the key just lasted longer than anything oh okay okay that was a good test that revealed that we need to use the back not the front for these durations when we're looking at this so we just do durations dot back instead of durations dot front aha here it is what are we typically doing for show amounts the duration lay duration 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 this is where we don't have enough keys i think yeah and that's minus one okay that one's a that one's good as it is okay let's try that Oh, man, this could be so much better, but it's a lot better than it was. And I really can't spend too much more time on it. So uh, let's, leave, let's check it in. So it, my preference in a met in a something like that is to comment out the method that I just created. If, I'm, if I know I'm not using a method, I like to comment it out. That shows me that I'm not using it and I don't need to ever go and, and maintain it again at a, at a certain date. But if it seems like it's useful, it might, it might be useful in the future. That's a nice thing. And I can go and come back to it later, uncommented it. Uh, I created a function called get show duration which basically looks through all the existing um, nodes of show amounts and looks at how long they have left until they're done. All right, good. So what did I call this? Oh yeah, make the stack amounts never overlap. Okay, so we made it uh, make stack amounts mostly never overlap. Okay, we didn't quite do that all the way. We had to, we had to qualify that one with the word mostly. That's all right though. Okay, here's what I want to work on next. The menu tabs. Create art for menu tabs. Let's do this. Let's do it. 
for the R for the menu tabs. All right, so what we're talking about here, let's run the game. What I'm talking about is this. When we go into the menu while we're in the game, we've got a whole bunch of menus that we can cycle through and it gets really easy to get lost. Like, I don't, I have no idea. I mean, I could look up in the top left and right and I see that I press E to go to the map and C to go to ability. But what if I want to go to relics, right? I have no idea how many C's or E's I have to press to cycle through to get to the relics, right? I just start pressing them and finally, oh, wait, wait, there was one. Oh, I missed it. I had to go back to it. There it is. So confusing, so unclear where everything is on this, this little, this menu system with L and R buttons. So what we want to see is some tabs on the top of the screen, right? Or maybe on the side of the screen where it just says, um, just a list of tabs that say, hey, here's press, you know, L and R to go through these tabs. And um, yeah, you see them all on screen at once. So let's take a screenshot. You can see that and count up the number of menus we have. We have, okay, so we have map, equipment, abilities, tribs, relics, settings. That's six, six menus which means we could fit those all on screen if we wanted to yeah let's let's go ahead and try that let's let's just um start with drawing all the labels or rendering the labels okay so we've got one for pause menu we've got one for the light menu we've got one for inventory yeah okay that's good we've got three we can start with see if these are working at all i mean what we, what we were trying to see here is just a bunch of labels at the top of the screen and the ones that are not selected will be gray and the one that is selected will be pure white. Okay, so we're not, oh wait, we haven't gone to that. Oh wait, well, oh, there it is. Okay, oh wow, we're seeing it here on the relics menu. Okay, so we're seeing them on the left of the screen there. They're all like scrunched up. So we're not gonna do spacing and also the X is totally wrong. Um, wonder why. All right, cool, we've got it on the, the mini map now. Yep, we're seeing it here on this function too. Weird that the punch is flickering. That's super crazy. But we're seeing it on every one of these menus and I can press the button and I can see that it's making the current one brighter than the others. Okay, let's get this in the in the right position on the screen. How about we take a screenshot to figure out kind of where we're at. All right, good stuff. Um, menu tab, we need to go to this menu tabs function and um, look at our, look at our pause variable. Yeah. Well, okay, that's weird. We still have a, oh, there it's in a totally the wrong position. Position. Here it's better. <laughs> okay, this is crazy. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's not working. <laughs> Definitely not working. All right, let's try our parent being the view parent node, and we can try our parent size being camera size. So our parent size is cam cam dot size, and our parent is the actual view parent. So that should make things a little more universal, and it should be based on the entire screen's size, so that hopefully that hopefully that works more consistently. All right, good. Yes, we're seeing it start in the middle now, like pause 0 0.5 should be. Excellent, okay, good stuff. Now we've got it so whenever we switch, we're seeing that the, the current menu is lit up brighter, and when we escape, we it, it removes the old ones. It's awesome. And our parent size seems to be about correct. Um, it would be nice if we were offsetting from the, from the middle of the screen. We've got width per pause.x minus equals possible dot size floating point times 0 0.5 times width per. Now, I think I need to add in a, or subtract a 0 0.5 in there somewhere, but I'm gonna, just gonna try it without that first. So we're, we're taking the middle of the screen and then we're subtracting half of the number of tabs we're going to have to us uh, to establish our first x position oh it feels good to finally do this it's always been it's always needed more clarity in the menu where the heck you are well, how many l's do i need to press to get to the neck the menu i want to get to how many r's or l's do i all right yes that looks good that's about the right place in the top i love it Cool. So now we can create some little tab, um, some tab sprites. Let's take another screenshot. Man, this is already working really good, actually. I love it. We're gonna call this one menu tab. Okay. And we're gonna flip it. Uh, flip vertical. Imager. Flip vertical. There we go. Okay. Okay. We can just do a drop shadow. This is 23. Look at all these drop shadows we got here. Get rid of most of those. We'll just do one drop shadow. What? I can't change the color. What's going on here? Okay. I can change the color now. Awesome. Loving it. And we can just change um, this so we have a nice little do something like this. This is the sort of like popped out tab. Okay. We need to make a slightly darker version of this gray color, but not all the way. So so that it's too dark like the other one and we need to oh oh this needs to be only 14 pixels tall so we're cutting off one two five pixels so that should be 
14? Well, it's 15 with the shadow. Okay, that's fine. Okay, hopefully, hopefully we're looking pretty good here. <laughs> All right, this is already looking better than it was before, but we've got one voxel too few on the top. Why, 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 I don't know. This is great. Oh, menu tabs. Man, I've been waiting for this one. Make it easy for me to navigate these menus. Make it easy to know where I am. How many L's, how many R's do I press to get to the menu that I want? It's it's more easily navigable because we've got them all visually on screen and in a in an order that makes sense. It's beautiful. Oh yes, look at this. Oh, we also have, um, we need to run a certain shader on those sprites to make them look just right. I think, hopefully that looks perfect. How could it not? So there's one final thing I'd want to do here on this, and that's to add a, a left button and a right button. Shouldn't be too hard, but dang, I'm hungry. I kind of want to stop and get some food. We're already there. Here, brighter one, let's make you... Okay, you're currently at a brightness of 28%. Let's try 50. All right, and should we try and... Yeah, let's, why not? Let's do the, um, the last function. The last little bit of this functionality would be adding in two buttons to show... Okay, there it is, animate buttons. That's kind of what I was thinking of. For each button, an M's button. So exactly what we want. We want two buttons. Okay, and we've got a base pause that, and then base pause dot x minus equals 0 0.5 times width per. Okay, uh, now, actually, we just want to do for each i2. And we also want to use the, the right next button. Um, see menu next buttons? Okay, that's cool. We can use the first menu next buttons, which is to find it in menu. We can easily get that. And so we've got this auto button equals i equals zero. Then we are using C menu next buttons dot front. Otherwise we're using C menu previous, shoot, this first one should be prev, prev buttons. This is menu next buttons dot front. Okay, there we go. And we got pause equals base pause. And if i equals one, then pause.x plus equals possible dot size times width per. We don't need to do anything else there. And we've got, oh, we got our player type is C player one. Got a button. What? It doesn't like that. Player type, button type, font type, player type, player type, button. Uh, maybe somebody need to bump button there. Yo, what's up, Drum Drum? Hey, how you doing today? What's up with you, man? Things are good here. Just about finished with the stream, but I got the, I got what I've been trying to do done. That's cool. Menu button. This is it's a vector of button types. No viable conversion from const vector button type val to const button type. It's need to be okay. I'm I, we, we're really close to finishing all this right here. There's just one function that's not compiling. What did work? Bhutan. Oh, dude, for sure. Bhutan. Okay, Bhutan. It's 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 the most glorious variable name I've ever seen. Definitely keeping that done. Let's see if this all works. So I'm I'm ready to go get some dinner, man. I'm hungry. I need to fill up my, my yum yum tank. My yum yum tank needs more in it. I'm on I'm on reserve tank of yum yum. Seriously, my brain is here. Okay, here we are. Pressing the button. Look at that. Oh, we've got okay, we've got our oh uh, yeah, hey look, there it is. We've got our E and our C buttons. But one of them is covered up and the other one is almost covered up. So we just need to move them a little bit to the left and the right and down a little bit. So we're talking about down like four pixels and to the left like eight pixels and the right like four pixels. You've got like six menus you can get to while you're playing the game. And it was super confusing before because it had no tab system. You had no idea where you were. So you can press L and R, the, the equivalent of the L and R buttons on your gamepad uh, to cycle through your menus. Um, but before you had no clue where you were, but now we've got these nice little tabs up there that show you like, oh, look, I'm on the map tab. Look, now I'm on the equip tab. Oh, wow. The, the ability tab? Oh, I can go left and right either? This is perfect. Okay, but check it out. Oh man, this is so great. I love this. I love this so much. I just want to <laughs> kind of want to keep doing this all night. Just sit here rotating menus because of the glory of it. It's glorious. I love how it all worked out too. Like I was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna have to rearrange all my menus. I'm gonna have to draw forever. But this really worked out so quickly and so easily. It wasn't hard at all to do this. It's kind of neat because I thought I would have to change it because some of these menus are don't have a little thing in the middle like this one. This ability menu doesn't have a sort of a, a central um, background. Um, the equip menu like this one has a nice little background to it, but the map and the ability menus don't. But this turned out really good to have these tabs sort of coming out of the top of the screen. And I love it. This is great. It's just very much more functional and easy to know where you are 
bar in this these menus now so that i know more than twice oh my god right yeah yeah, it's time to stop the stream. Okay, so hey, I'm glad uh, I'm glad to be streaming today and making this happen. And um, but that's all I got in me. It's all I got in me. It's all my brain has today. So I'll be back once again next Wednesday, at the same time, making the game Wraithbinder. And um, thanks for watching this, person. We'll catch you next time.